So on the left side of the screen, what, what is represented here is the way that prokaryotic cells reproduce. And it is called binary fission. And essentially what's happening is you have one parent cell and notice that we've got a circular prokaryotic chromosome and everything in the cell is going to get copied including this chromosome so remember the chromosome is made up of DNA so the copying of that whole chromosome is called DNA replication so you see here we have one complete chromosome and a second complete chromosome once everything in the cell has been copied then we have separation to basically opposite sides of the cell Every, this chromosome goes this way, this one goes this way, and we get a division um, basically in two, and we end up with two daughter cells, and both of these daughter cells are gonna be an exact genetic copy from the parent. So this is the process that prokaryotic cells go through. This process alone would not allow for any kind of genetic recombination. Um, however, there are ways in which bacteria or prokary uh, all prokaryotic cells can actually pass genetic information to one another. Okay, and we call this, so this figure on the right that I'm showing you shows the ways that, that they can share or swap little pieces of genetic information. And we call this horizontal gene transfer. And this is one way that, for example, a particular bacteria gains the ability to be resistant to an antibiotic because they have picked this up from another prokaryotic cell. And so there are basically three processes shown here in which genes or pieces of DNA can be transferred. And the first over here is called transduction. And this is simply when, notice this right here, notice from the virus chapter, this is a bacteriophage, which is a, a virus that specifically infects bacterial cells and transduction means the virus itself is carrying DNA and part of this DNA then makes its way into the host cell and so it uptakes or has new genetic information that it didn't have before that infection. The process of transformation just means that a bacteria or a prokaryotic cell is actually taking up DNA just from its environment. So from the media that it's growing in, um, it can actually take up foreign pieces of DNA. Conjugation is a process where bacteria or prokaryotes can directly transfer from one to the other, many times through what we call a sex pillus. So we talked about the little pili, the little hair-like projections that occur on the outside of prokaryotic cells. So through those pili, pieces of DNA can be transferred from one cell to the next. So HGT or horizontal gene transfer would explain how prokaryotic cells can suddenly have a new um, trait, a new characteristic because they've received this from another bacterial cell via a virus or from the environment. Now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about what are some positive influences that prokaryotic cells have in, in, on earth and so essentially they they without prokaryotic cells none of us would be able to live or survive so they are an absolutely essential component to all ecosystems so let's just talk about some ways in which they have a positive impact impact so one of the first of, of those is just simply the carbon cycle so all organisms are are made up of a certain amount of carbon Okay, and so when organisms die, whether it's plants or animals or fungus or other material, they begin to decompose, okay? And so there are microbes that will actually break down or decompose organic matter, so other living things, in the soil. And by doing that, it releases carbon in the form of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There are other organisms as part of the carbon cycle who actually can photosynthesize. So we think of plants, but there are bacteria 
that are photosynthetic, okay? And we call them cyanobacteria. And so they're actually taking in CO2 from the environment and turning it into chemical energy, just like plants do. So these are very vital roles that these microorganisms play. In addition to that, bacteria serve essentially as a food source for many organisms in food chains. So that's just one way. That's the first way we'll talk about that microbes are important. Let me get rid of some of this writing so we can talk about the next way. So you see up here um, some plant roots. And you'll notice that on these plant roots, there's some nodules okay, that are, that are protruding that are pretty obvious. And so I want us to talk about another way in which bacteria or prokaryotes perform a really important function, and that is in nitrogen fixation. So we talked about carbon, and another role they play is in nitrogen fixation. What do I mean by nitrogen fixation? Well, nitrogen gas in two is very prevalent in the atmosphere. So there is no limit, right? We have plenty of nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. However, the problem is plants cannot make use of atmospheric nitrogen in this form into nitrogen gas. Most of the time, Nitrogen is a limiting factor in plant growth. However, they cannot use it as it exists in the atmosphere. So nitrogen fixation means that you're converting this nitrogen gas into a usable form of nitrogen. Okay, and so for an example of what would be a usable form by plants would be, whoops, NH3 which is the chemical formula for ammonia. So if you think about if you're a gardener or if you fertilize your lawn, when you look at what's in that fertilizer, ammonia or some form of a nitrogen, nitrates, nitrites are gonna be in all fertilizers because typically that's limiting for plants. So there are bacteria, prokaryotes, that do just this they actually take in atmospheric nitrogen and they convert it to a usable form. And so what I, what I have pictured here, just change. this root with the nodules, it shows a particular type of bacteria called rhizobium. And it forms these nodules with the plant roots of legumes. So if you're not familiar with what a legume is, examples would be peanuts, um, beans, uh, alfalfa hay, alfalfa, um, soybeans, chickpeas, if you like to eat um, hummus, all of these would be legume plants. So that this rhizobium bacteria forms this really nice symbiotic relationship. So symbiotic meaning they're, they're both giving something to the other and they're both benefiting. They form this nice symbiotic relationship with the legumes and the rhizobium are nitrogen fixing bacteria. So they turn atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia so that the plant can use it. And the plant then in turn performs photosynthesis and provides nutrients and other things to the bacteria. So they live together very nicely. So this would be a, a very natural type fertilizer, okay? So that's, just, that's another way that bacteria are helpful in our ecosystem. Now, the, on the next slide over here, I have a picture of, of the human body. Specifically, I'm showing you the digestive tract. So first of all, one thing I wanna say is, for every cell that you have in your body, skin cell, blood cell, muscle cell, bone cell, count all of your cells, you have about 10 times that in bacteria that are living in or on your body that are what we would call good, whoops, bacteria or your natural flora 
that's there doing something positive for your body. So one thing that your good bacteria does for you, it colonizes your skin and essentially it prevents any bad harmful bacteria from having a place to come in and residing and taking over. But another job that good bacteria do is in your intestines. And so they, they colonize your intestines and number one, they prevent bad bacteria from coming there, but they also are benefit to you in just your digestive health. There's lots of research going on today looking at the natural bacteria that live in people's digestive system and how much of a role that plays in autoimmune disorders, in allergies. So we're just on the cusp of finding out all of the benefits of these bacteria. But I did want to point out, let me just give us a little bit of space here. You may have heard of an infection and it's just usually, um, whoops, excuse me. It's usually given a, a name, a short name, C. diff. Okay. And what that stands for, Clostridium difficile. And this is a nasty bacteria that causes, you know, severe stomach problems. And typically when people pick up this nasty infection is after they have been on antibiotics. So they, they get antibiotics prescribed for some problem. And, and by taking these antibiotics, it essentially cleans out all of the good microbes that are in their digestive tract. Therefore, it opens up a way for these bad bacteria to come in and colonize and cause issues. So that's what C. diff, that's, that's part of the problem that it causes. So let's move on. Let's talk about some other great uses that prokaryotes provide for us today. And one of those is in making foods that we enjoy. So I know that you've seen on the commercials what great digestive health benefits yogurt provides for us because of the live cultures, the good bacteria that are in that yogurt. And so without those bacteria, we could not ferment or have this type of food. So some of, um, some of one of the types of bacteria that, that, um, lives in yogurt and is good for us is called lactobacillus. So there's other, um, species of bacteria in yogurt also. The other food that we enjoy because of fermentation due to bacteria are different kinds of cheeses. There's lots of food products that bacteria provide for us. Um, another one I want to point out, and so this right here is human insulin. So for diabetics that are insulin dependent, they have to have this insulin all the time. We have lots and lots of needs for insulin because of the number of diabetics. Insulin today is actually made by transgenic bacteria. So transgenic means these bacteria have been given a gene that's not a normal bacteria gene. And in this case, they have been given the human insulin gene. So these bacteria are given the gene, they produce insulin in large amounts, and then we, we isolate that insulin to be used um, for medical insulin for diabetics. The insulin is one example. There are other things made this way too. For example, different clotting factors for those who are hemophiliacs who would do not make their clotting factors so that they would have internal bleeding or other problems. So clotting factors is another drug made this way. Some other advantages of prokaryotes is in treatment of our sewage. So you see on the left here, a water sewage treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. And um, we, your book talked a little bit about biofilms and some biofilms are nasty and, and can cause problems. This, in this case, we have a biofilm of special bacteria that begin to metabolize or break down or degrade this organic waste that's in our sewage. So that's definitely a plus. On the right, what we see is what we call bioremediation. And so you see in the ocean, whoops, in the ocean here, there's been an oil spill. And there are actually prokaryotes that will metabolize the petroleum 
And so those are definitely used when we have these oil spills. Now, what I read a statistic that in an oil spill or in a petroleum spill, about 80% of the oil can be degraded within a year, okay? Now, there are some components um, that are more volatile that are not broken down as quickly, but within one year, about 80%. So it's n- it's not perfect, but it is much better than n- n- no metabolism at all. 